Hello, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'd like to talk about different paths that can lead you into the artificial intelligence space, if that's a field that you're interested in working in. After I made my last video on picking my track within electrical engineering, I realized I didn't actually plan out my path or aspire to work in AI. It just sort of happened. And that's probably how a lot of people's careers go. Maybe you try to plan it out, but you know, an opportunity will come up or you meet someone who works in some field or at some company and you just kind of stumble down another path that you didn't even know existed. I do think, however, if you want to get into AI, you can, as long as you learn certain fundamental subjects and develop some foundational skills. So let's start at the top. What is AI? It's a field within computer science and it focuses on teaching machines or computers how to think, behave, and understand the world like or better than humans do. AI is used in so many different fields from like the obvious, like self-driving cars or these virtual assistants like Siri or Alexa to maybe the less obvious like healthcare or finance. So if you think about all of these different fields that use AI, you can also start to think about the companies and the types of organizations that might have roles for you. The big tech companies for sure, Google, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Netflix, those are the obvious ones. But then there's also demand for AI engineers in the health sector, at hospitals, research institutions, even on Wall Street. They're using AI to build predictive models to make better decisions and earn money more efficiently and smarter. All of these different industries will definitely require different specialized skill sets and certain domain knowledge, but there are some fundamental skills that anyone working in AI should have. Let's go through what I think are probably the most important. First, math. Linear algebra, calculus, logic. These are all things that you have learned or you will learn in high school. Then there's the more advanced topics in math like probability and statistics. The next one is you definitely need to know how to code. To get a job as an engineer or a software developer in AI, you definitely need to be proficient in some programming language. Python is really the big one, but there are also companies that value candidates who have experience with C++, R, Scala, Java, and JavaScript, among others. And lastly, for fundamentals, there are topics within computer science and engineering that actually give you the tools to be able to apply your math and your coding skills to do AI, to actually teach a computer how to think, behave, and understand the world like humans do, to be able to analyze and process data, build and train models, understand and evaluate results. These topics are like algorithms, signal processing, data science, neural networks, and predictive modeling. With these technical skills, you can then think about which area within AI you want to work in, and then you can start to build up the appropriate domain knowledge to be able to apply these skills. Let's just take a few examples. If you want to get into robotics or autonomous driving, it would be really good to take classes in image processing or computer vision, or even in the vision sciences space, which is maybe more on the psychology or neural sciences side, but it teaches you how the human brain processes visual information. An example within this space specifically is in autonomous driving. To be truly autonomous, a car needs to know how to change lanes. And to know how to change lanes, the car needs to know how to detect lanes. And to know how to detect lanes, many algorithms will use cameras and will search for those lane markings within the images from the feeds from those cameras, because the lane markings on the road are actually quite standard. And to be able to extract those lane markings from an image, you have to know how to process that image and how to handle it in software. The second example I have is if you're interested in finance, you'll want to take economics classes or finance classes to understand how predictive models in that space currently work and how people in that industry currently process data and make decisions. An example in this area specifically is underwriting, where a lender will evaluate a borrower to see whether or not that person will be able to actually pay back the loan. There are now some AI-driven solutions that can make this assessment for lenders automatically. If you are developing that software for the lender, you need to know what kind of factors to put into that predictive model to be able to make any sort of judgment on the borrower. Some factors that 
I might put into that model intuitively would be like age, credit history, education level. I don't know. I clearly don't have the domain knowledge. I'll give one last example to demonstrate the power of domain knowledge. In healthcare, AI is being used more and more in diagnostics. Deep learning models have been and are currently being developed to diagnose diseases more quickly and even earlier than a doctor may be able to. To be able to build these models, you need to know what kind of data will be useful as input to the models. A model that predicts neurological disease, for instance, might need to look at brain scans. I actually published a paper with a few classmates that was related to AI in this space. It was about predicting the prognoses of obese versus non-obese patients who have congestive heart failure in the ICU. And we did it to study the obesity paradox, which in this context is the fact that outside of the intensive care unit or ICU, people who are obese tend to not live quite as long as people who have BMIs in the normal range. But in the ICU, obese patients with congestive heart failure tended to actually have better survival rates and lived longer. So for that project, we had to understand how obesity is measured, how congestive heart failure is denoted in doctor's notes or in the billing information. Just a lot of knowledge in this specific domain that we had to research in order to know how to process and model the data. And lastly, I want to talk briefly about how I ended up in AI. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I was in the image and video processing space in graduate school. When I got to graduate school, I was given a project that was sponsored by Texas Instruments, and it was about the surround view system that they have on some cars. Personally, I've never had a car that has this, but some cars have this driver assistance software installed where if you're about to parallel park, it can bring up this display that shows your car and the cars you're trying to parallel park between. And it's meant to help guide you to be able to parallel park correctly. So Texas Instruments has or had this system where they've got four fisheye cameras placed on the four sides of the vehicle, and they want to take the four feeds from these cameras and stitch together a bird's eye view or top down view of your vehicle so that any obstacles that are present around your car, you can see in this bird's eye view. And that's the surround view image. When they first presented this problem to me, it was about how can we improve the way that we render this bird's eye view image? And that slowly evolved into investigating the fisheye stereo problem. Stereo is when you have two images that you use to be able to triangulate depth. We as humans use stereo vision. We have two images that we capture on our two eyes, and we use that along with you know, our understanding of this world to understand depth. So you'll probably notice if you close one of your eyes, your depth perception gets a lot worse. Okay, so back to the research. A popular topic within computer vision is taking a single image and estimating depth given only that one image. This problem was really interesting to me, so then I got into trying to tackle this problem with fisheye images. I think I can save any discussion of my research for another time, but basically I got into AI from an image processing background. In terms of coding, I started with MATLAB, which is actually a scripting language, but it was easy for me to pick up Python because MATLAB and Python are actually quite similar. And then I ended up taking classes in data science, machine learning, computer vision, not only because I was interested in those spaces, but because those topics were directly related to the research that I was doing in graduate school. So it was kind of out of necessity that I started doing any work related to machine learning or building predictive models. With my internships too, most of them were related to image processing, but only the last three that I did were related to computer vision or machine learning. And I had to go actively pursue internships in those particular areas because I felt like I needed that industry perspective on problems in AI. And then when I started applying to jobs, I was applying to anything related to data science or computer vision or image processing. And AI was just really hot at the time, and it still is, that it just happened so fast and really naturally. I was actually really considering a job in pure data science, and that area still really interests me. But I think all of these paths are so intertwined and there's so much overlap between some of these areas 
that as long as you have the fundamental skills and knowledge and you're following a general path that's leading you towards data science or machine learning or AI, you will find a job that excites you. I think I'm going to end the video here. If you have any questions on how to get started with some of the topics that I covered in this video, or you have questions about my background, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Please hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Oh boy.